Hello guys, my name is Isaiah from The Automator and in this little video I'm just going to talk about a little tip uh, that I have for the sleep command so that you don't run into some problems uh, in your code when you're using this particular command. So I ran into this uh, little situation in which I was working with code uh, that was sending some messages uh, with a specific delay. So it was a GUI, it had a section in the GUI that allowed you to set up a delay uh, in between the messages. So you set up like 10, 20 seconds and it would take that time um, and use the sleep command to kind of like wait it out and then send the next message. Now that is completely straightforward, good, uh, you know, it works, it's simple and that is okay. Now the problem is that there was something else that we wanted to do and when you're using the sleep command there are some things that you have to keep in mind so let me go ahead and demonstrate real quick what i'm talking about so um if i go here to my code um i'm just going to create something very quick and simple we have a loop um that is going to get the position of the mouse stored in x and y and let's just go ahead and tooltip that into our into our screen. So this should be very straightforward. If we run this code, what you will see that it does is that it doesn't do anything because it failed. Oops. Sorry. There we go. It's going to just go ahead and show you a tooltip with the current position of the mouse. It's something simple. Of course, the code can be anything else. So you're in a loop or whatever you're doing, and now you want a, a delay between the actions. In this case, for this loop, uh, I'm just grabbing the position of the mouse. And as you can see, it's kind of like instantaneously, wherever I move the mouse, there is kind of like a tooltip there. Now, um, if I go ahead and add a sleep for a delay, let's go ahead and set up our delay here to let's say five. Now, uh, five would be in seconds, right? So the sleep command accepts only milliseconds in its parameters. So that's the reason why I'm just going to grab the seconds and I'm going to multiply it by 1000 because that's going to give me the milliseconds. Uh, it's going to convert that into seconds for the sleep command. So we have our delay, five seconds, uh, multiplied by 1000. Now, when I run this, uh, what you're going to see is, is that my mouse position is going to get updated every five seconds and that actually i can move my mouse normally but the position is going to be updated every five seconds which is to be expected and again this is actually not bad uh, in certain situations um it is working it is simple it is very easy to understand but what happens when you want to notify the user of the delay like for example I want to tell the user whenever it sent the message, right? So the program sent the message. I wanted to tell it like, okay, now we're still waiting 30 seconds for uh, until the next message. And that would be kind of like a countdown going down, right? So I want it to be 30 seconds, 29 seconds until the next message is sent. And then the countdown restarts. So I wanted to notify the user that something was going on because as the program was at that moment, the user didn't know that something was happening. So it was kind of like not good. So we wanted to do that. What you have to keep in mind is that when whenever you use the sleep command in this fashion, it actually renders your script useless because as soon as you're in a sleep, um, nothing else can happen in the script during that time. And that is something that you generally do not want. Um, it, in this particular situation, what I wanted to do was kind of like, okay, we have a delay. Now let's chunk, create kind of chunks of the slip command. And that's what I'm going to show you here. What I would do, uh, what I would change this to is to just go ahead and um, instead of use the slip delay in this case, because our issue was that we had very long delays, say for example, 120 seconds which is two minutes. And in some cases we needed more than that. So if you had like a five minute delay between your actions, that means that your script is stuck for five minutes and nothing can happen within your code within that time frame, and that's not good. So what we did is that, let's go ahead and do the loop 
for the time delayed. So that means that I'm going to actually loop five times. And for each part of my loop, I'm going to sleep for one second. Now, this looks like something that, why would I do that? Well, this allows me to put code here I could check for other things and do other things before I sleep for the next second. Again, I'm going to sleep the five seconds. So if you tell me I want to sleep for 10 seconds, of course, I'm going to look 10 times and the sleep is going to happen in between each second. But I could, I can still do stuff and check for stuff. That's exactly what we did. And just as an example of what could I do here. So let me put a, a small sleep here of one second before I do this so that you can actually see the result. Um, Tooltip, um, let's say, um, A index seconds pass, for example. Now, in each of my loop, uh, uh, runs for my delay, I could actually first grab the position of the mouse and then I could actually give you kind of like a um, uh, an update of what is happening until the next action happens. And this is actually, in my opinion, a little bit better. If you need to sleep for a long time, actually divide that sleep in small chunks so that in the end, you could actually perform more checks, like for example, breaking out of the loop or some other things of your script so that you can actually um, have the screen functioning while you're still waiting for something to happen. Of course, um, this is something easy and you could also use a set timer for that. But in this case, if you want to use the sleep command, I would suggest you just do this uh, instead of having very long slips. So I hope this helps you out. Um, we're going to be seeing each other in the next video.